Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Black Talent TV's Be In The Talk. Of course, I am your hostess with the most, Miss Simone Jackson, here to bring you guys another great episode of Be In The Talk. As you guys know, Be In The Talk is all about having engaging conversations with influential guests in the, in the, in the entertainment industry. I'm actually really excited about our next guest for today. Um, he is a former football player for all you sports fan clans. Uh, you might know him. But he used to play for the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Carolina Panthers, and the Baltimore Ravens. But he does now has, has retired and, and decided to go on other venues such as music videos. He has done music videos for people as Michelle Williams, uh, Beyonce and Kelly Rowland, J, uh, J, Jasmine and Jasmine Sullivan, uh, Layla Hathaway. I can literally go on and on and on with this great, great um, list that he's got. But he's also did a music video for The Winkle and Time. He's also a director. He had directed a movie called Last Fall, which stars Lance Gross, Vanessa Bell Calloway, Keith David, a lot of great stars. I am really excited to talk with him today. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Matthew Cherry. Hi, Matthew. Hey, hey, how you doing? How are you? Thank you for being on the show today. Oh, no, no worries. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Like I said, you have quite the resume. I could have gone on and on and on about the extension <laughs> resume that you have. It's quite impressive. But like I said, um, you are a former football player. So I'm very interested to know, you know, sports and film, that's a very two different fields. But how did your passion for filmmaking begin? Uh, honestly, it didn't really start until I retired and moved to LA, um, you know, about 10 years ago. I, uh, you know, I think my last year was 06 and I um, was uh, with the Ravens last and then I ended up moving to uh, LA to pursue, you know, a career in entertainment, worked as a PA, uh, found out about this program called Street Lights, which was really great. And you know, the cool thing about being a PA is that, you know, you kind of support all the different fields. So, you know, be that, you know, dealing with talent, be that dealing with paperwork, be that dealing with, you know, grip, electricity, you know, the electricians, you know, et cetera. So it's like just a really good way to kind of be on set and to be close to all these potential careers and kind of picking and choosing where you want to go. Uh, luckily, I ended up working on a couple of shows that um, – or ended up working on a couple of shows that starred um, – you know, that starred – also starred, but also had a lot of uh, Black directors kind of behind the scenes. So mm -hmm. Girlfriends, Heroes, you know, et cetera. And it was – really through that, that I was like, oh, wow, maybe this is something that I can do too. And then, uh, you know, started with music videos and then uh, moved on to try to, you know, do more narrative stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, you got quite the impressive resume with the music videos and, and your films. So that is, you know, that's quite, you know, that's quite the journey for you. Um, you know, can you, can you tell us, you know, the process of, of, of kind of transitioning to football player to director kind of, was that difficult? How, how was the process of that? The process of what? Uh, 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 of transitioning to football player to director. You know, it was, just, it was a long, you know, it was a fairly long process. I mean, you know, every, every, you learn something every time you direct, you know, be that a music video, a short film, feature film, et cetera. So, you know, it was kind of a, a journey that I'm still on, you know, that, that, that transition. Cause, uh, you know, I played football all my life, uh, 20, God, about 25 years. No, not 25 years, about 20 years from five years old to 25. And, um, you know, I've only been working as a filmmaker for about nine or 10. So, you know, it's, it's something where every job you, you learn and every set that you're on, you learn something new. Every time you film your own set, you know, you learn something new. Anytime you're on somebody else's set, you learn something new. So, you know, it's just an ongoing process. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, not only do you do music videos and, and um, feature films as well, you also did a short film called Hair Love, which is really getting, you know, quite the powerful response, which is, of course, Hair Love is about, you know, Black fathers and uh, about doing their, you know, daughter's hair. Can you, uh, can you tell us a little about that short film and why you decided to make it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's something that we're still currently in production on and, you know, honestly probably won't be done with until towards the end of the year. But uh, I don't know, I've always been interested in animation and I love, um, you know, just seeing like that that level of uh, representation in animation and, you know, just seem like a really good timing to uh, try to do something like this. So, 
you know, had this idea of doing a Kickstarter and um, did it. It kind of blew up and, you know, now we're in production. Oh, I just can't wait for you to see because I can't, I was reading the, you know, the plot for it and it sounds really good and it's, and it's something so, I think, it's going to be refreshing, especially from a different point of view, um, from a rare, never told point of view. So I'm definitely excited to see the film, um, you know, and I got to know, you know, Matthew, as a director, what type of, 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 of stories are, are you interested in, in telling? Um, I mean, you know, I, I'm interested in telling stories that humanize us. You know, I think uh, I think film is most powerful when when it shares experiences with people who normally wouldn't get a chance to experience those experiences. So, you know, anytime you can show a black father who you know looks like a young man who normally people would look at and cross the street if they saw them, but anytime you can sh- show an image like that and show him being a loving father you know, hopefully that'll open up people's consciousness and be like, hmm, you know, that guy that I've always stereotyped, you know, maybe there's something deeper below the surface that uh, I, you know, hadn't considered before. And I think that's one of the most powerful things in film and really is the thing that I'm most interested in doing, just trying to share, you know, almost regular Black life, but in ways that uh, humanize us more. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm and I'm completely with that. Like I said, that's why I'm I'm so excited for for the hair love because I I do believe it's such a, it's going to be such a powerful narrative that you know and like I said, it's told from a really point of view. So I'm excited to see that. I'm excited that you you know decided to bring that you know to life. So I'm happy for that. And I'm ooh, I cannot wait for that movie to come out. Um, but you know, I have to ask: is it is is it more difficult being used to being a football player? Or director, which is a little bit more difficult for you? Which one do you think is a little bit more harder? Um, definitely filmmaking, because when in filmmaking you're essentially a coach or an owner of a team, and you're delegating a lot, and you know there's more responsibility. Um, as a player, you know you do your you do your individual job, your teammates do their individual jobs, and collectively that leads to a great play. As a director, you know, you're essentially the coach and you're trying to make sure that all the pieces fit together, but dealing with different personalities, different issues, problems, et cetera. So definitely uh, filmmaking. Oh, definitely filmmaking. I, I, I wish I could ask you some hard pointing football questions, but to be honest, I have no idea about football. I know Zilch. <laughs> oh, no. I, am not, I am not the sports fan in the family. I'm not in sports, but I do have a brother who would know a lot about football and he is excited that I was going to be able to talk to you today, but uh, I definitely will have to one definitely have to tell him you tell him that you know you definitely say directing is definitely a lot harder. So for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, no doubt. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know, as, as I said before in the introduction, you dir- directed the Wrinkle in Time music video. Can you tell us how you got involved with that? Yeah, I mean it was pretty simple. Um, you know, Ava DuVernay uh, is a good friend and. She uh, gave me a shout because uh, we were, they were going to, this was a song that she, you know, really liked in the movie um, from Chloe and Halle called uh, Warrior. And um, she just really wanted to try to put together a visual and it came together fairly last minute. And, um, <laughs> you know, she's familiar with my work and my ability to kind of work in the crunch and, you know, in, 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 in shortened periods of time and, so, you know, she reached out and, you know, I love Ava. She's amazing. And it just worked out. Yeah, absolutely. I love the film and I love the music video. So I'm glad that, you know, she gave you a little shout out. And, you know, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I would love to get a little shout out from Ava Demonay. That's, that's the coolest thing. Um, yeah, that's definitely pretty awesome. So, you know, um, so with that, you know, just to go on, what projects, are you involved with, with future directing projects? Like you can give just a tiny little dish to us about uh, here at Black Town TV. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I can really speak on right now is obviously hair love, which you referenced before, you know, a couple, a couple other things in the works, but I just can't, I can't get too deep into it yet until it's things fall through all the time. And some things are uh, a little secretive. Um, I'm a, uh, producer i mean i mean uh i mean i'm sorry i'm an executive at uh, jordan peele's production company uh monkey pop productions and so i'm gonna i'm an executive producer on our on his uh, upcoming film uh, black klansman which is a um spike lee's next feature film which premiered at Cannes and won uh, some major awards up there so that's coming to theaters august 10th um but yeah 
I, I think that's so awesome. I cannot wait to see that movie. I heard Spike Lee is just back in his top form with that movie, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just so excited. I'm so glad it's getting the reaction that it is. It's, it's, it's definitely. I heard probably one of his best. So I, I'm super excited to see that movie, and very surprised that you know that you, that you guys were involved with that. So that's pretty cool too. Yeah, I mean, it was a cool story. You know, um, Jordan had worked with uh, this company QC Entertainment on Get Out. And, uh, you know, they were, they were producers of, they were one of the producers on Get Out. And, um, you know, they came across this uh, book property and were pitched by these uh, two writers who were the initial writers on it. And um, just like this crazy, unbelievable true story of this first black police officer in Colorado Springs who was able to infiltrate the Ku Klux Klan over the phone. Um, and, and so it was one of those things where, like, initially uh, they were looking at Jordan to potentially direct and once, uh, you know, Get Out started blowing up and taking off, you know, I think it just really made Jordan think more in a macro sense, like, hmm, you know, I definitely want to expand my brand and, you know, I don't necessarily feel like I have to direct everything. So, you know, who would be a great director to film this project? And, uh, you know, we thought about uh, Spike Lee was the first person we thought of and gave him a shout and uh, sent him over the uh, the book and the script. And, you know, <laughs> Spike was like, is this real? Is this like a real thing? This, this feels like a Dave Chappelle skit and, uh, you know, you know, very, very real thing. And, um, you know, he had a memoir and everything that the script was based on and, uh, you know, Spike and his, uh, writing partner kind of took over and put their personal stamp on it. And you know, I think the combination of, uh, somebody like Spike, but then also Jordan who, you know, really gets that balance of, uh, tension and, and comedy, you know, really help to uh, make this project as, as as dope as it as it hopefully will be received. Because uh, you know, I, personally, I think it's his best since uh, Inside Man, and I think people will really dig it. Oh yeah, I'm hearing it's his best since Inside Man too. So yeah, I think people are gonna love it. And, and honestly, how can you not love Spike Lee's movies? It's got such a style to it. So I am definitely excited to see it. I heard it's definitely a movie for the times. I heard it's perfect for what's going on, especially with now. So I'm definitely, definitely excited for that. So just to, um, just to, I, I know you said that 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 your that your short film here love is 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 still in kind of in production but i did read that you did sign here love to become a book deal can you tell us a little about that yeah, yeah no i mean it was just this crazy campaign to where um i mean literally everything happened through the kickstarter uh and, and that's one thing too that i always try to tell people like you know kickstarter campaigns can be you know taxing and you know you can feel like you're begging sometimes but more than anything, it allows you to consistently promote a project that you're doing and you're able to kind of present this into the world in a way where it's not like, you know, it's hard when you go to people straight for help without showing that you're trying to help yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I think this Kickstarter campaign, you know, there are a lot of like ideas and companies that we were thinking about trying to collab with. And um, what ended up happening was, you know, as the campaign blew up, you know, everybody reached out to us instead of us having to reach out to them. And uh, one of the first people that reached out was this great um, editor over at uh, Penguin uh, Random House, uh, Namrata. And she uh, just really believed in the project from day one. And it's actually something that we had in our, in our, um, in our rewards before we even thinking about it being a real thing. We had, we offered like, okay, we'll, we'll send you guys like a picture book, but it was something that we figured we'd have to put together on our own. But then she saw that and was like, look, this, this sounds great. You know, this, this campaign has so much momentum. So, you know, let's, let's try to do this for real. And so uh, Vasti Harrison, who did our initial illustrations um, on our Kickstarter campaign, is uh, the person that's going to be illustrating the book. And, uh, and then I wrote it. So that should be coming to stores um, kind of, I think, like uh, spring next year. So spring 2019. Um, we're going to try to do it in a way where it like kind of coincides with, uh, with the film. So it'll either coincide with like a trailer or we'll put the short out to people or send it to our backers or something. But so yeah, spring 2019 is when it's supposed to drop. Oh my goodness. I can't wait. That's, I can't, I think it's going to be a really great book. And I honestly think it's going to really affect a lot of people because again, 
it's a very untold narrative and and it's something that I think is important to talk about and, and, and to share that narrative because you know there are single fathers out there who 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 mm-hmm. do have that struggle you know that I definitely know that they'll feel that uh, I know they will feel not only rep- represented but they will also feel like okay someone's definitely wanting to hear our stories and so I think that will be a catalyst for something special pretty much mm-hmm. for sure yes, mm-hmm so, you know, uh, Matthew, where do you hope to take your, you know, self directing wise in the future? Where do you hope? Do we, do we want to do some award winning films? Do we want to do like a big blockbuster films? Where do we hope to see ourselves in, in, in the future for directing wise? You know, I just, I just want to keep telling stories, you know I mean? It would be, it'd be great to just to keep working. I mean, you can't really chase awards out here. Um, you know, I think just to be a working director, um, <laughs> That, that continue, you know, that consistently puts stuff out that people are into would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, then the last question coming to you there, Mr. Cherry, but before we get off, um, you know, what, 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 what do you hope people can take away from your films, watching your films? What message do you hope they take away? From Hair Love or? Oh yeah. From Hair Love, from any of your films. Um, you know, kind of like what I mentioned before, you know, just that, we're, you know, the, the black experience is very diverse. You know, we're, we're human beings first and foremost, and, you know, just, just trying to normalize that human experience. Yeah, I definitely agree to that. And I think the Black Town TV here audience will also definitely agree with that. So yeah, Matthew, I really do appreciate you, you know, you know, sharing your thoughts today and letting us, you know, getting into the world of, 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 of just, of not only music and, and music videos, but you're directing into your, you know, feature film and your and your short film here love which i cannot wait to see can't wait to read it as a book as well so i do appreciate you giving your uh, time today no 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 worries thanks for having me absolutely everyone black talent tv my everyone you know i'm your hostess with the most Miss simone jackson if you guys are interested in advertising with us or going to sit down and talking with me make sure you guys check us out at info at tv.com again we appreciate mr matthew cherry for talking with us and make sure you guys definitely check out hair love when it definitely comes out and the book deal in 2019 and make sure you guys check out the wiggle in time video if you guys have it again i my name is simone jackson i again i thank mr matthew for joining us today we are going to have another great episode till then bye bye all right see you thanks for having me absolutely all right bye